The western sun withdraws the shortened day, and humid evening gliding o'er the sky. In her chill progress to the ground condensed, the vapors throws, where creeping waters ooze, where marshes stagnate and where rivers wind, cluster the rolling fogs and swim along the dusky mantled lawn. Meanwhile, the moon, full orbed and breaking through the scattered clouds, shows her broad visage in the crimsoned east. Turn to the sun direct her spotted disk, where mountains rise, umbrageous dales descend, and caverns deep as optic tubes describes. A smaller earth gives all his blaze again, void of its flame and sheds a softer day. Now through the passing clouds she seems to stoop, now up the pure cerulean rides sublime. Wide the pale deluge floats and streaming mild o'er the skied mountain to the shadowy vale, while rocks and floods reflect the quivering gleam, the whole air whitens with a boundless tide of silver radiance trembling round the world. But when, half blotted from the sky, her light, fainting, permits the starry fires to burn with keener luster through the depth of heaven, or quite extinct her deadened orbed appears, and scarce appears of sickly, beamless white. Often this season, silent from the north, a blaze of meteor shoots, and sweeping first the lower skies, they all at once converge high to the crown of heaven, and all at once relapsing quick as quickly reascend, and mix and thwart, extinguish and renew, all ether coursing in a maze of light. From look to look, contagious through the crowd, the panic runs, and into wondrous shapes the appearance throws. Armies in meet array, thronged with aerial spears and steeds of fire, till the long lines of full extended war, in bleeding fight commix the sanguine blood, rolls a broad slaughter o'er the plain of heaven. As thus they scan the visionary scene, on all sides swell the superstitious din, incontinent, and busy frenzy talks of blood and battle, cities overturned, and late at night in swallowing earthquakes sunk, or hideous wrapped in fierce ascending flame, of sallow famine, inundation, storm, of pestilence, and every great distress, empires subversed, when ruling fate has struck, the unalterable hour, even nature's self is deemed to totter on the brink of time. Not so the man of philosophic eye, an inspect sage, the waving brightness he curious surveys, inquisitive to know the causes and materials yet unfixed of this appearance beautiful and new. Now black and deep the night begins to fall, a shade immense, sunk in the quenching gloom, magnificent and vast, are heaven and earth. Order confounded lies, all beauty void, distinction lost and gay variety, one a universal blot. Such the fair power of light to kindle and create the whole. Drear is a state of the benighted wretch, who then bewildered wanders through the dark, full of pale fancies and chimeras huge. Nor visited by one directive ray, from cottage streaming or from airy hall, Perhaps, impatient as he stumbles on, struck from the root of its slimy rushes, blew the wildfire scatters round, or gathered trails a length of flame deceited over the moss. Whither decoyed by the fantastic blaze, now lost and now renewed, he sinks absorbed, rider and horse, amid the miry gulf. While still, from day to day, his pining wife and plaintive children, his return await in wild conjecture lost. At other times, sent by the better genius of the night, in oxious gleaming on the horse's mane, the meteor sits and shows the narrow path that winding leads through the pits of death, or else instructs him how to take the dangerous ford. The lengthened night elapsed, the morning shines, serene in all her dewy bright, unfolding fair the last autumnal day, and now the mounting sun dispels the fog, the rigored hoarfrost melts before his beam, and hung on every spray, on every blade of grass, the myriad dewdrops twinkle round.